Okay, John chapter 7, part 2. Okay, so um, I'll start with 25 because I kind of left off in the middle of 25 and 27. Then some of the people of Jerusalem said, Is this not the man they want to kill? Look, he's speaking publicly and they say nothing to him. Is it possible that the rulers really know that this is the Christ? But we know where this man is from. Whenever the Christ comes, we're not meant to know. No one will know where he is from. Then Jesus called out as he taught in the temple. It's almost like Jesus was reading their minds and hearing their little conversations. You know me and know where I am from, and I have not come on my own initiative. I've self-appointed, but he who sent me is true, and him you do not know. I know him myself because I am from him. I come from his very presence, and it was he personally who sent me. So they were eager to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him because his time had not yet come. Um, okay, I'll keep reading. But verse 31, but many from the crowd believed in him and they kept saying, when the Christ comes, will he do more signs and exhibit more proofs than this man? Now, Jesus actually did a lot of signs. He healed a lot of sick people. He raised people from the dead. It's just, this is one particular group of people that he happened to be with. Um, so maybe they didn't know he was doing other stuff in other towns and villages and whatnot. So he was doing a lot of signs. Um, so anyway, verse 32. The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering these things under their breath about him, and the chief priests and Pharisees sent guards to arrest him. Um, Therefore Jesus said, For a little while longer I am still with you, and then I go to him who sent me. You will look for me and will not be able to find me, and where I am you cannot come. <laughs> then the Jews said among themselves, where does this man intend to go that we will not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion of Jews scattered and living among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What is the statement of his mean? You will look for me and will not be able to find me. And where I am, you cannot come. Um, now, obviously, Jesus was talking about, you know, going to heaven, right? Because obviously you can't go to heaven, A, if you don't believe in Jesus as the Son of God and have repented, and B... You can't go to heaven if, uh, I don't know, I lost myself there. But anyway, they, they can't go to heaven. Oh yeah, unless they die, like actually die. Um, and then they'll have, then they, well, they can't go to heaven anyway. Um, so, let me just go back. I myself, uh, oh yes, when they, in verse 28, when the people are saying, ah, but we know who he is and where he's come from. His parents are Mary and Joseph. Um, they, there were scriptures prophesying, there are scriptures prophesying about the Messiah and where he would come from. And that, and they say that, you know, nobody's going to know where he comes from. But what that was talking about was the fact that he would be coming from heaven and that he would be fully God and fully man, right? Um, they're still thinking in flesh. They're still thinking that the Messiah is going to be a human being, um, who's going to deliver them from Rome and restore Israel to its former glory, right? They're not thinking in terms of forgiveness of sins. They're not thinking in terms of um, having to redeem people. See, the Jewish leaders and the Jewish religious people did not think that they needed redemption. They did not think that there was anything wrong with what they were doing. They disqualified themselves from being considered sinners, because they, in their eyes, were keeping the law, they were disciplined, they were, you know, doing all these rituals, they were sacrificing, they were doing everything that they thought they needed to do to attain God's favor and to um, have eternal life, right? So in their heads, they're thinking, okay, well, the Messiah is just simply going to liberate us from Rome, and they're going to, you know, he's going to make Israel awesome again, you know, and he's going to work with us because we're the religious people. So, you know, we'll have a foot in the door and we'll be all buddy, buddy with them. And so of course they're thinking in physical means because they don't realize their spiritual circumstances. They don't realize that they are lost, that they are deceived, that they are blind and deaf, and they don't realize that they're sinners and that they need to be not physically saved, but spiritually saved, right? And so when they're saying, ah, but we know where this guy comes from. He was, you know, he's from Galilee. Um, he was actually from Nazareth, uh, who, which is just south of Galilee. Um, and the, prof the prophecies about Jesus said that he would be born in Nazareth. 
or sorry, that he would be a Nazarene. He was born in Bethlehem, but he grew up in Nazareth. And it does say that. It says he will be a Nazarene. Um, and he was born in, but he was born in Bethlehem. They didn't, they didn't realize this. They could not connect the dots, <laughs> you know, between what was prophesied and what they were seeing right in front of them. Um, and plus, they, some of them probably thought that Joseph was his true father, um, which wasn't the case. So anyways, they were thinking again in the flesh, they were thinking, okay, well, he can't be the Messiah because we know where he comes from. He comes from Galilee or Nazareth. Um, and we're not meant to know where he comes from. But they didn't realize that he was from heaven. He was sent from heaven. So really he's fulfilling the prophecies and they just don't realize it. Um, okay, you will look for me and will not be able to find me and where I am you cannot come. So 35, they're saying, where is he planning on going? Um, and in one of them, one of the books, they said, oh, is he going to kill himself? Is he going to commit suicide? Is that why we can't follow him? Um, what does a statement of his mean? You will look for me and not and will not be able to find me and where I am you cannot come. Now on the last and most important day of the feast, Je Jesus stood and called out in a loud voice. So he stood up in front of everybody and said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Do you remember that out of John 4, the woman at the well? If you knew who was talking to you, you would ask him for living water, right? So he's reiterating this again. If anyone is thirsty, not physically thirsty, spiritually thirsty, right? If, if you recognize your need for more, let him come to me and drink. For whoever believes in me, who adheres to, trusts in, and relies on me, as the scriptures have said, from his innermost being will flow continually rivers of living water. And I love this, verse 39, but he was speaking of the Holy Spirit, whom those who believed in him as Savior were to receive afterward. Okay? So he's obviously not talking about physical living water because that would be kind of weird if we had water gushing out of us all the time he's talking about spiritual things again he's talking about the holy spirit okay so remember jesus came to enlighten people and bring revelation of their spiritual need the the jews of the time were only thinking of their physical needs they did not realize that they needed to be saved they did not realize that they were even in sin right because they thought that oh we've got the laws if we just follow the laws then god's going to be happy with us and that's enough and jesus's whole point now there were jews that were saved in a sense because they had faith and obeyed god right and their heart was was right before god and they they were saved by their faith right these jews these religious jews are not are not exercising faith they're simply checking boxes and saying, ah, we did this, we did this, we did this, we did this, we did this. And it's pride, right? So anyways, Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit, about this living water. He's talking in spiritual terms who the, whom they would receive afterwards when he'd died and went to heaven. The Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus was not yet glorified or raised to honor. Verse 40, listening to these words, some of the people said, this certainly is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed. But others said, surely the Christ is not going to come out of Galilee, is he? <laughs> you know, it's only Galilee. Does the scripture not say that the Christ from comes from the descendants of David and from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? Yeah, he was born in Bethlehem, but maybe they just didn't know that. So the crowd was divided because of him. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. Then the guards went back to the chief priests and Pharisees who asked them, why did you not bring him here with you? The guards replied, never at any time has a man talked the way this man talks. <laughs> right? So these people are actually expressing their, yeah, maybe this is him, you know. And here's the Pharisees straight in. Have you also been deluded and swept off your feet? Has any of the rulers of Phar of, or Pharisees believed in him? Right? So they're basically saying, here, if we don't believe in him and we're the, you know, the righteous spiritual leaders of Israel. And if we don't believe in him, then you can't believe in him. That's basically what they're saying. Verse 49. Um, but this ignorant, contemptible crowd that does not know the law is accursed and doomed. Right? So they've, they've already, they've elevated themselves to um, an elite position. Right? So the crowd are just peasants 
they're not studied, they're not educated, they don't know what they're talking about, they don't know the law like we know the law, and they're just deluded. They're just being deceived and because they don't know any better. But we're the Pharisees and we know better. We know the law. We know blah, blah, blah. Um, and so verse 50, Nicodemus, the one who came to Jesus before him was one of them, asked, does our law convict someone without first giving him a hearing and finding out what he is accused of doing? They, so they responded to him, are you also from Galilee? Search and read the scriptures and see for yourself that no prophet comes from Galilee. Um, but what they didn't realize was um, he wasn't from Galilee. He was from Nazareth, which is just kind of outside Galilee. Um, and everyone went to his own house. So are you also from Galilee? Search and read the scriptures and see for yourself that no prophet comes from Galilee. I just think that that is so ironic, you know, that they're saying that. And I'm just thinking now, like, there's a lot of so-called religious people in churches nowadays who, you know, will say to people, ah, read the scriptures yourself. God is love. God, you know, God just loves everybody and wants everybody in heaven. And, you know, he's not, he's not going to judge anybody on this and that. Um, and it, it, it just, I've been really shocked. I know this is like me coming, coming in here, but I've really been shocked. No, I can't even say, sh well, no, I have been shocked. I've been shocked at how deceived even people in churches can be. Um, especially, uh, people in church leadership, not mm, necessarily my church leadership, but like just all over the world, like some of these pastors who get on TV and start talking about, you know, if you sow a seed of a hundred dollars or, you know, a thousand dollars, then God is going to bless you. And I'm thinking, what, you know, and they go and they take scripture completely out of context. And then they go and say what these Pharisees have said, are you awesome? Search and read the scriptures and see for yourself. You know, that's what it says. And it's like, yeah, completely out of context, dude. Like, totally wrong. And it's just, it's shocking and dismaying and disappointing how people will use the word of God to twist to, for their own means, you know? And I mean, they're like, and see for yourself that no prophet comes from Galilee. You know, they're saying this, and yet all the prophecies of Jesus, you know, are there to be read. And if they just... <laughs> you know, were willing to step outside of themselves a little bit, they would see that this Messiah is not coming in a blaze of glory and, an, you know, with a big, huge procession. No, he is coming to set the captives free, not physical captives, not the, the, the country of Israel because they were captive to Rome, but the spiritual captives, the people who are bound in their hearts and in their minds. And this is where their problem was, is that they just kept seeing it as a physical thing, as as a worldly thing, as a fleshly thing. They couldn't get their heads around the fact that they were spiritually lost. They were spiritually deceived. And this is why they were blind to the truth of who Jesus claimed to be. Um, you know, and it's a shame because there's a lot of people who so who are so-called professors of the faith and say they believe in the Lord and believe in Jesus. And yet, you know, they're doing the same thing. They're just, you know, they're, there's a lot of religious churches out there. There's a lot of religious people out there who are still trying to impress God with their works. Um, basically Solomon said it, there is nothing new under the sun. The same things that they struggled with back then are the same things we struggle with today. Nothing has changed. There is no so-called evolution. We are not evolving into better people because of technology and we're so much more advanced than we used to be and we're so much more moral and it's just a load of crap. <laughs> you know, we're living in Sodom and Gomorrah today. It's just packaged differently, you know. Um, and Jesus came to seek and save the lost the spiritually lost, the people who recognize that they were spiritually lost, not physically lost, spiritually lost. So we need to examine ourselves and, you know, just realize that we need him and we need a salvation and that the rivers of living water, he will be faithful to give that to us by his Holy Spirit. If we simply believe and trust on him, right, then we are spiritually saved. Hallelujah.